Paul? All right, I'm about, I'm going live. Hey, everybody. Come on in. Let me make sure I got my camera up here so I can see all my chat. See my chat. Got to see my chat. Okay. Hey, Jewel. <coughs> Excuse me. Did I say that right, Jewel King? Jewel? How you doing this evening? Come on in. Please click the like button on your way in. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And please share the video to whatever um, your uh, social media platform is that you use. Okay, cool. I don't know if I've seen you on my lives before. Are you new to this channel? Or are you just coming across the channel? Or <laughs> But either way, welcome to my live. Welcome to my channel. Um, welcome to the Prime Time Squad. And come on in. Click the like button. Share and subscribe, please. And thank you. And hit me up in the chat. Those of you who are watching, check in. Let me know where you're checking in from. Oh, well, thank you, Jewel. This is your first time being here. I appreciate that. Welcome to the Primetime Squad. I appreciate that. Come on in. Kick back. Grab you something to drink on. I have my little red cup right here. I always say, you never know what's in this little red cup. It could be anything from water to yak. <laughs> New York. Okay, New York. Shoot, I plan on visiting there soon. I've never been to New York, but I plan on visiting there soon. That's one place I want to get to. That's my bucket list travel spot. That's on my bucket list for traveling. So what's time, what's, when's the best time to travel to New York? Any particular season or around any time of the year when there's particular events going on? I know I definitely don't want to travel there in the wintertime because, uh... It gets cold here in the Midwest, but I know it gets cold in uh, New York, too, because y'all right up there by the water. and it, Yeah, y'all be having some snowstorms, like, for real. But anyway, anyway, y'all, y'all see the title of this live? I shall not be moved. Why? Because the devil is a liar. Just a little something, something, something that I was always taught when I was growing up. No matter what the circumstances may be, no matter what the outcome may look like, how bleak it may look, no matter what comes your way, how hard it comes. Because the devil is a liar, I shall not be moved. I should not be moved. This week has been cray, cray, crazy. But regardless of what I've been going through, every time I turn around and talk to somebody, it's like, oh, my God, the situation is a lot worse. You know? And I was talking to my son earlier because um, a few things that's been going on this week with us is Sunday. Was it Sunday? Um... Yeah, Sunday. Sunday, my sons was on their way home, and their car stopped. And we didn't know what was wrong with it. And, of course, my son, he's a he's a guy, but he don't know a whole lot about cars. So, anywho, um, his car had broke down, and I'm thinking, well, you know what? We'll put it in the shop, you know, figure out what it is, what's going on, what's wrong. And at first, we were thinking, like, transmission because he was saying you know it won't go forward but it'll go backwards so automatically you know thinking uh it gotta be the transmission but anywho um we have it told to a shop of course it's sunday so they really can't check it out and then like monday monday i work all day because <laughs> i mainly work from home so i work all day and i get off of work and I'm going to the store, getting ready to go to the store because I got a cake order, <coughs> excuse me, that I got to do. 
And most people who follow me know I'm a professional uh, personal cake decorator. And so I'm about to go, you know, shopping for what I need. I go outside in my car. It starts. But as soon as I put it in drive, it won't move. I'm like, okay, what the heck? And I don't know anything about cars. Nothing at all. I know how to put gas in it, make sure oil is in it, make sure my fluids is in there. I wash it. I clean it. I spray the tires <laughs> so they shine. And that's about it. <laughs> but um, I'm like, dang, what a coincidence that my car is doing like the same exact thing that my son's was doing. And one second, y'all, because I'm cooking too. So let me put some food in the stove real quick. But, I'm going to talk to y'all while I'm doing this. But, um, my car is doing the same thing as his. And I just thought that was crazy. Like, that is so weird. Our cars both break down within one day of each other. And it seemed like they having the same exact issues. cooking some dinner for tomorrow sometimes I cook my dinner like the day before the night before you know but anywho I'm cooking my dinner for tomorrow and so anyway back to the cars you said summertime June July okay cool that's good to know that's good to know I might plan to try to go there this year I know this well next year this year we're going to the Bahamas so uh next year I'm gonna try to hit up New York we always try to go somewhere really cool every year you know take a family trip it's like eight or ten of us we all go together and we pick a spot and vote on it per se <laughs> vote per se but um and then that's where we go and we start planning and saving to go on our trips but anywho um so my car breaks down and it's like the same issue so i put it in dry i put it back in park and i'm just sitting there because i'm like God, please don't tell me my car broke down too. Please don't tell me we down to one car and the very next day my car won't work. So I put the car in park. I'm just sitting there. And while I'm doing that, I'm calling my dad and asking him about it. And he says, well, see if he'll drive in, let's see, his park, reverse, neutral, drive, then one, two, three, two, one. <laughs> Actually, it's some chops. I'm frying some chops. But yeah, I love me some fried chicken and some fried chops. But um, so he said, see if he'll drive in two or, you know, in three. So I put it in three and it wouldn't drive. So I'm like, okay, but it keeps reversing. Like every time I switch the gear back and it has to go past reverse to get to park, I can feel the car move back. But when I put it in drive or three, it wouldn't go forward. It wouldn't do nothing. So then he said, try to do it in two. <laughs> so I put the car in two. And it pulls off. And I'm like, he said, it's your transmission. I'm like, are you kidding me? Now, my son's car is probably, I'm thinking, well, his is doing the same thing. Because it won't go forward, but it goes backwards. And as a matter of fact, he had to leave his car where it was. And he had to back it all the way up into a gas station that was nearby. And then my dad that day on Sunday had went to rescue him and try to see what was wrong with his car. And he helped him and his friends and my other son, you know, push it after they backed it up, you know, and then try to push it, you know, up into the gas station parking lot. But, and then Monday, my car tripping. So I'm like, I cannot believe this. We down to no cars. This, <laughs> this is crazy. So, I'm like, okay, Monday after I get off of work, I call um, one of my relatives, and I'm like, I really need to go to the store, because I got a cake order, and they was like, okay, cool, we be there, 
no problem. So, um, they come and pick me up, and they happen to need to go to the grocery store, too. So, we just up there shopping and whatnot. And then, um, come back home, put the groceries away. Tuesday, I have to, uh, work again, because, again, I mainly work from home. I process disability claims at home. That's, like, my main, you know, coins, my main coinage. This process and disability claims. And so, I work all day. And then, I'm supposed to go to my part-time gig, which is at the uh, nursing home. And I'm like, the car's still not working. Okay. One thing about it is, one thing about it. I'm a firm believer of when you do good to others, good comes back to you. No matter what you're going through, if you do good to others, good will come back to you. From the minute my son's car broke down, and then my car broke down, it's been people, I don't know how many people I had come over to my house, like five people come over, try to fix my car, try to see what was wrong with my car, you know, offering to take me anywhere I need to go, um, without me even asking, uh... I got a, well, actually, yesterday was Tuesday, so after my main gig, um, I, you know, got dressed for the part-timer, and because I had spoke to a few people who told me it'll be okay if I drive the car, you know, to the shop instead of paying it to get towed, like we just paid to get my son's car towed the other day, just drive it in two, just be careful, because you're really not supposed to drive your car in two, so I drove it to the mechanic shop which is right by my part-time gig. So I drove it there, and the mechanic jumped in the car, and he, um, well, no, I drove it there, picked him up, my mechanic, and drove to my job, which was right down the street, and then he got in the car and took it back. And then later that evening, um, another friend, you know, who had told me, you know, if you need anything, need any rides, you know, let me know. So I called her, I'm like, dude, can you come pick the girl up <laughs> from work? <laughs> And she was like, okay, sure. Now, mind you, my son has, he, he works too. So, Monday, Sunday, he had, uh, the car broke down in the evening. So, he had already worked Sunday. Monday came around and he had to work. So, his supervisor offered to come pick him up. And then, uh, Monday evening, somebody else, you know, brought him home. And then, Tuesday, he, his uh, best friend came and picked him up. And took him to work. And then his supervisor brought it home. So we've been good. You know, as, as far as like, you know, I, I'm always trying to look at the brighter side of things. And there's some people who cars break down and they run across situations like that. And they can't get to work. They don't, you know, and, and it's like, got to call Ubers and taxis and all that kind of stuff. You know, I've been offering to give people money to take us where we need to go, which hasn't really been anywhere so far, but, you know, a couple of places. And nobody wants any money, and I'm like, nope, trying to throw it at them, nope, take it, take it, take it. No, it's okay. It's okay. I'm like, okay, all right, you know, and, and, and that's what I'm getting at. You said so true to be good to people, and God bless you with good people who be, yes, amen, amen, amen. And it is a blessing, like I was saying earlier, to be treat people how you want to be treated and be good to people and good things will come back to you. It's called karma. It's called karma. And another thing, I could be sitting here stressed out like crazy, complaining like crazy. I haven't. Since Sunday, besides the fact, oh my God, how the heck both of our cars break down? You know, we got two cars just in case one breaks down. But other than that, it's like, okay, put the cars in the shop. You know, and God will make a way for them to get taken care of. And if they can't be taken care of, I will take them boys to the um pal and I will sell them. And get some coins and get a new car. I mean... Sometimes you just can't stress over things that you can't control. You know what I mean? It's all about having faith and believing that things will work out. I mean, point blank. 
Um, so I haven't really been stressed about it. Uh, tomorrow, you know, I'm going to get up. I'm going to work from home, process my little claims, make sure people get their coins. <laughs> make sure people get their coins on time. And then, you know, get to my part-time job. I don't know who's going to take me tomorrow, but I know I'll get there. As a matter of fact, my supervisor offered to take me, offered to pick me up Tuesday and bring me to work. And, well, actually, you know what? It wasn't even my supervisor. It was somebody in our human resource department at my part-time job. And they offered, you know, to come pick me up. But, you know, somebody else ended up doing it. But anyway, anyway, sometimes when you think your situation is at its worst, it can always be worse as well. Like, for instance, let me flip my little meat. Hold on, y'all. See if it's ready to be flipped. But for instance, my um, supervisor at my main job, okay. Another thing, another thing. Okay, here's another situation. <laughs> When I say a lot of things been going on in the last few days, I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> and karma, and right, Jewel, karma is real. It's not a joke. You do good things in life, good things will happen to you. I'm a firm believer of that. Um, the other day, my, uh, well, I've been having issues with my uh, work computer. I have, like, a laptop for work and um, a couple of monitors you know basically my workstation that i use at work is at home so everything i would need at work is at home and i've been having issues with that and didn't know how i was going <laughs> to get another uh laptop because i need to get another laptop and they were going to build me one you know the it department was building me a new one and i'm like okay how am i going to get the laptop so what happens, my supervisor had hit somebody up at work. It was like, go to Tanya's house, get her get her uh, computer, you know, help her set it up, get the old one, put the new one. You know, it's like, okay, okay, I'm good again. Got me my new little laptop for work, you know, brand new, spanking new. And all is well. I'm back up and running, up and working again. And while I was talking to my supervisor, when I say things could always be worse, my supervisor, he had emailed everybody this morning and said his car had to go to the repair shop. Not because of transmission or, you know, anything like that. Uh, he was on the interstate the other day doing about 70 miles an hour and his brakes went out. On the interstate. On the interstate. Now, mind you, we just had a snowstorm like a day before that or two days before that. We had a snowstorm. It was bad. The streets was bad. And his brakes went out on the interstate at 70 miles an hour. It just so happens God was with him on, his, on this side, on this side on that side and definitely in front of him you know surrounding him and he was able with no other cars or nothing been around him to cruise it pull it over safely and call for someone to come get him things could always be worse my car broke down but it broke down in front of the house my son's car broke down but it broke down in a safe place as well. But we don't have two cars right now. Two cars are in the shop right now. My mechanic just called me and told me my son's car will be done tomorrow. And his situation was actually a fuel pump. So that's, that's, what, that's what was wrong with his. I thought it was something a little more serious like a transmission. Because, you know, that's just what people was telling me. And they also telling me my situation is transmission as well. So, I don't know what wrong with mine yet. He's going to get to mine after he fixed my son's. Um, but, in the meantime, you know, you have to always remember it can always be worse. And don't be moved. Just like the message in my video. I shall not be moved. Why? 
because the devil is a liar. Point blank. Point blank. When you, when things come your way and it seems like you can't face them or you don't know how you're going to get through them, you have to believe that it will work out okay and not be real negative about it because I, I just, you know, I'm in my 40s now, so I done been through some things. <laughs> I done been through some things, but I was raised in church and I was raised to have faith. Even when, okay, y'all know what it says about a mustard seed faith in the Bible? You know how small a mustard seed is? Like, so small, so tiny, a mustard seed. As long as you have at least enough faith the size of a mustard seed, that's all you need. That's all you need. My supervisor was on the interstate, and his brakes went out 70 miles an hour. Wasn't nobody here, nobody there, nobody there. And we had just had a snowstorm two days ago. His situation could have been a lot worse. It, he could have not be here right now or laid up in a hospital somewhere. And then it just so happens one of the people that came to my house to help me um, check my car out, you know, just, just try to, you know, rumble around the car, you know, how people are. They just want to, you know, be kind and check your car for you. And I'm just sitting there watching, and we're just conversing, you know, just talking to each other about situations and things. And um, they tell me they've been going through stuff, too. Now, mind you, I didn't even ask them to come over. People just been volunteering. Hey, where you at? I'll come check your car out for you. They come over, and they like, you know, they've been going through stuff, too. They don't know how they're going to pay their uh, utility bills. One of their bills is over $700, and that's the heat bill. Now, I don't know if y'all follow the news, but in the Midwest, it has been bitter cold here. Bitter cold. Snowstorms. We got a snowstorm coming this weekend in a few days. Again, we've been having storms like every week, and it's been really, really cold. Negative 30 wind chills, never negative 40 wind chills, wind chill, and... They don't know how they're going to pay their heat. Um, their light bill is high. They don't have a job right now. That's the thing. They've been looking for work, looking for work, looking for work because they got laid off. So they doing, I mean, it could always be worse. It could always be worse. Your situation could always be worse. You don't never know what the next person is going through. And that's why I say you have to have faith no matter how bad it looks that it will work out fine. That's all you can do. You don't sit around being miserable, cussing and complaining and being negative and having a bad attitude, and then you know what happens next. You end up taking it out on somebody else, somebody who has nothing to do with your situation. Somebody who has nothing to do with your situation, you end up trying to take it out on them as well. It's like... I'm going to put my car in the shop. I mean, I'm going to uh, see, find out what's wrong with my car. The mechanic, he hit me up today because he had already thought it was the fuel pump for my other son's car. So he checked it out, and he hit me up. And he said, yep, I was right. It's the fuel pump. I was like, okay, cool. How much is it? For everything that they did, tow and everything, because they had to tow it too, it's $450. He said, do you want me to fix it? Oh, uh, yeah, I want it fixed. But you go, what? I'm not going to leave it sitting there. I'm not going to have you tow it back to the house. Of course I want it fixed. <laughs> He's like, okay. <laughs> he said, it should be done tomorrow. I said, well, my son gets paid Friday. He said, that's cool. It's still going to be done tomorrow. I'm like, that's cool. He gets paid, we'll pick it up. You know, it is what it is. You just have to, if, if something happens, you just have to face it. You just have to believe that it's okay, that it's going to be okay. And faith the size of a mustard seed. That's all. That's all you need. Now, as far as my car, 
I don't know if it's the transmission, the mechanic, and other people think it's the transmission. I don't know. If it is, I'll face it then. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll face it then. And some people, when they, I mean, okay. I hear people complaining all the time. I see it on Facebook. Let me flip my meat. I see it on uh, Facebook. I see it on YouTube. And I see it in real life, of course. Turn this fire down, so. But yeah, I hear people complain all the time. Oh, 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 blah, 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 blah. I see it all the time, all the time on social media. They want people to have, you know. <coughs> sympathy for them and they want people to get a huge reaction and that's not me i might sit here and tell you things that's going on not too personal not too personal because i know how that goes especially on youtube <laughs> people like to take your information and run with it and do videos and all that kind of stuff because there's a lot of people out here on this youtube that's haters um but not too personal. But besides doing reviews on movies and TV shows and things like that, sometimes I just have actual real-life discussions with, you know, my subscribers. And that's not me. Just to come on social media, oh, I'm crying, you know, going through all this kind of stuff. There's some things that I believe that the way you react about certain situations might can help somebody else in a certain situation. You know, by believing, having faith, and talking about faith, and talking about, you know, things things can happen at any time. We all can go through stuff. I done lost loved ones. I done, you know, from my mom and other people, grandparents, other family members, friends, you know, just like the next person. And... Sometimes it just seems like everything is coming at you at once. But you have to be strong. You have to be strong. And you will get through it. Even when it seems like it seems like it can't be done, you will get through it no matter what the situation is. Losing a loved one. Losing a job. Losing a car. Losing, you know, you have to have faith and you have to be strong and believe that everything will work out fine. Otherwise, the next thing you're going to lose is your mind. The next thing you're going to lose is your mind. And there's a lot of people out here losing their mind because they don't know how to handle um, the struggle. The struggle. But I don't know how y'all was raised, but I was raised in a very impoverished household. Like, we had very little means. Like, very little means. Um, it was times where we was eating the same thing every day. Beans and cornbread. Beans and, I mean, hot dogs, ramen noodles, lunch meat sandwiches, butter sandwiches, syrup sandwiches. Um, <laughs> I mean, I know others have too. It wasn't 
wasn't just my household. I know others have too. People know the struggle. Know the struggle and know how it is living on the system as a child and your parents got to get help from the system, from the welfare, the WIC, the, uh, well, well, we got food stamps back then, not the EBT that they use now or the SNAP or whatever they call that thing. But, um, Growing up, we was never homeless. We never starved. We never went without medical attention. Um, you know, never lived on the street. Never lived in a shelter. You know, no shade to people who have been. You know, that's not what I'm about. I'm just saying, you know, giving my testimony. My testimony. And I struggled as a young parent when I first had my first kid. And so I know the struggle, and I didn't, like I said, I've been through some things. So when things happen now in my life, it's like, okay, the car broke down. Okay, my car broke down the next day. Okay, <laughs> it's like when you can't fix it, you just, it's like whatever happens, what's meant to be will be. What's meant to be, will be. And that's the reason why, again, I named this live, or this video, I Shall Not Be Moved. When things come your way, and you can't do anything but sit there and let it happen, and pray, and have faith, don't be moved. Don't be moved. Try not to stress. Try not to be bothered, because... If you can't fix it, why worry yourself out and pull your hair out or have your hair fall out or have a heart attack because your blood pressure done went up, because you done stroked out, because you just constantly worrying about things? Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And that's, that's the whole um, meaning of this video. Things could always be worse. Treat others how you want to be treated. Because karma is real. Karma is real. And I could be sitting over here losing my, you know, other job or my main job at work from home. But I could be over here losing my other job because I can't, I mean, I literally, on certain days of the week, I go from one job to the next. So I can't call no Uber. I can't call no taxi. I can't catch no bus because I literally have to, I get off one job. You know, this is just a few days a week. I work at a part-time job. And literally, within like 20, 30 minutes, I have to be at the other job. You know what I'm saying? So I could be like losing that job, getting rolled up, you know, because I'm either late or just not coming in. But I didn't have people, cousins, family members, pops, co-workers, people in human resources. <laughs> oh, I'll come get you. No problem. You know, it's like, and I, I don't have to ask. I don't have to ask. When you do good for others, good things will come back to you. And I don't know how many of y'all was raised in church. Or if y'all remember like some old hymns. But there's this old song that we used to sing. Let me flip my little meat over. I'm going to cook these chops and I'm going to wrap them up and I'm going to put them in the fridge. <clears throat> Make some side for them for the boys tomorrow. They get off of work and get out of school. They food, they dinner be ready. But there's a song and it happens to be the title of my life. I shall not be moved. So if y'all happen to know that song, why don't y'all sing a little bit with me? It goes a little something like this. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved just like a tree planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. One more time. 
I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved just like a tree planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. One more time. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved just like a tree planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. And that, my friends, is my testimony. My testimony. So on that note, I'm going to finish up this food, finish up my dinner for my cheering tomorrow. And I want you guys all to have a blessed night, and thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining the Primetime Squad this evening. And as usual, in the meantime and in between time, Primetime Squad, stay safe, be blessed, and I'm out. Deuces.